Hey everybody, welcome back to Magic Orthodoxy. My name's David and this is a magic review. Hey, today we're gonna to look at snaps from David Jonathan and Dan Harlan and penguinmagic.com. Uh, you might remember did other reviews for David Jonathan. We did Fortunity, uh, Fortunate, and Sovereign Sandwich. Make sure you go check out those reviews as well. But I can tell that you are gonna love this review. So you might as well hit like and subscribe and hit all your notification buttons now before you forget because you'll want to be alerted the next time I do a magic review or the next time I do a giveaway because I do giveaways every single month. Make sure you hit those buttons. Let's talk about this review. All right, Snaps, what is Snaps? Snaps is a two deck system. That's right, when you buy this, when you pay your 40 bucks to penguinmagic.com, you're gonna get two decks of cards. Two decks of cards that are photograph pictures so uh, there's no kings, queens, jacks, right? There's no numerics, nothing like that. Every single card is different. Every single card is a photograph and you can use these photographs for all kinds of creativity. Uh, and you, of course, you could use these for standard card tricks. They are made for the United States Playing Card Company, so they're gonna feel and handle great. But because of the nature of these cards, uh, I think card magic is gonna just open up to you in a beautiful, exploding cornucopia of love. I might have been exaggerating, but there is a lot here. Two hours and 41 minutes of instruction. Let's talk about it. All right, so the first question we always ask is, what's inside the box? You get a nice hard shelled box with a magnetic enclosure. Uh, you get two decks on the inside, like I said. Uh, one deck is called the Focus Deck, and it's all uh, made up of letters, right? Like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? And then there's the Iconic Deck, which is made up of icons. So here is where you're gonna see all of your psychological forces, color forces. Uh, you're gonna have the famous carrot card, force, house card, uh, all your card suits, clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds. You'll get number cards, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, animals, and ESP cards. The back design is beautiful. It's done by Phil Smith, and uh, it's made to look like a very vintage older United States Playing Card Company deck. And these decks are both marked. They are both marked, and they're marked with a whole bunch of different things. Uh, one, they're one-way marked, okay? They're one-way marked, so you'll always know which way the back is facing. Uh, second, they're marked between decks. So let's say you moved cards from this deck over to this deck, you'd know, you'd be able to find them because the two back designs aren't identical. And then third, they're gonna be marked for what's on the face. So you'll be able to look at the back and you'll know the image, the icon, the number, the letter, the animal, you'll know what the spectator is looking at. Okay, so is it what I thought? Uh, absolutely. I don't think there's any hidden agenda in the ad copy. I think they're very forthcoming about what the deck is, how it's made up. Uh, they they kind of tell you all the bells and whistles. So yeah, it's, it's totally what I thought. In fact, it's called Snaps, right? Right there in the title because it's symbols, numbers, and an alphabet photo system. Symbols, numbers, and an alphabet photo system. So it tells you exactly what the deck is. Well, not to mention that it's also snapshots, right? How are the angles to this? Uh, there, aren't, there aren't any angles because it, they're just card tricks and the uh, markings on the back are very faint. Uh, no one would ever know what you were looking at. Even if they could see uh, the markings, the markings wouldn't tip off the front, right? It doesn't, it's not like they're that obvious. So yes, they can totally be inspected, handed out, passed around. Your spectators can hold these, shuffle them, deal them to the table. They'll never see anything funny. All right, so what's the overall quality and production value of the video? Uh, you're gonna get a download. Like I said, it's two hours and 41 minutes. And Penguin Magic always makes good videos. You're gonna have live performances in the Penguin Lecture Hall. 
Most of the video is going to be Dan Harlan performing and speaking, but you will have David Jonathan and Dan Harlan for all your explanations. As far as what they're going to teach you, you're going to get an intro. They're going to go over what's in the box. They're going to talk about the decks. They're going to talk about reading the marks. They'll also talk about joining their Facebook group and there'll be some crediting. All right. So what about the tricks they're going to teach you? Well, there's a ton, as you can imagine, almost three hours worth of video instruction, you're going to learn a lot of routines. So I'm going to break each routine down for you very quickly. We're not going to spend a lot of time uh, going over all the details. I'm just going to give you an overview uh, just for time sensitivity. Okay. The first trick is called photosensory perception. It's with two spectators, each choose a random image, and then they try to send it to the magician. You use the cards from both decks, and then you end up reading uh, one spectator, the card that they selected, and then you do a drawing duplication for the second. The next trick is called the stop speller. One spectator deals to the table down and stops whenever they want, and they actually stop on the stop sign. They then insert the stop sign into a stack of cards upside down and the place where they put it spell out the word S T O P photo prophecy is done with two spectators. One spectator selects a card and puts it in an envelope on the table. The second spectator selects a card and puts it back in the deck face up. The face up card is spread and found and the two cards on either side of it spell out the word S T A R. And when you open the tabled envelope card, it is also a star. A picture's worth is done with a few spectators in the audience. They each grab a few cards from the deck and then they get passed around the audience. Then random audience members place those cards into the edge of a book. They're all exposed just like bookmarks. All the cards are then removed by one spectator. That is all except for one. That lone card is then turned to in the book. It is a picture of an airplane. The word airplane is on the page in the book and all the random cards that were pulled out of the book spell the word airplane. In the animals, the spectator and the magician each take turns shuffling up the cards. The spectator mentally selects an animal from uh, one of eight cards. Then they're all shuffled back into the deck and then the spectator is able to spell to their animal. Will the photos match is an old ESP trick, but done with a new twist. The spectator is given a pile of 10 cards, they deal the cards, they shuffle them, they arrange them, and then each one of those cards is grouped together with a matching pair. Then they're going to talk about all the psi forces that are in the deck, all the different psychological forces that are there. They're really quick. They're just one offs, uh, very easy. Like, you know, you know, you just think of a flower and of course they think of a rose and you turn the card around and it's a rose. Uh, Dan Harlan is going to show you how to use those as a way to find a spectator from the audience. And what's for dinner is just using a single card. It's a refrigerator and the spectator can spell to the food item in the refrigerator that they are thinking of. In what's my name, pairs of cards are dealt to the table and the spectator gets to select which pile they want to keep and in which order. Cards are dealt face up and face down. The spectator feels like they made all the choices and in the end, only the cards face up spell their name. Where's George is done with a borrowed bill and the spectator then selects eight cards at random from the deck and those eight cards match the serial number that was on their bill. In photo finish, a spectator selects a card from a deck of cards. It's lost back in the deck. Then they select two cards from the snaps deck and those cards reveal their selection. Push is done with two spectators. One remembers a card and the other remembers a card and they're able to push the image of the card they're looking at into the mind of the other person. And then lastly, in multiple exposure, this is a parlor trick you can do with four spectators. Each one randomly selects a card and each one puts it back into the middle of the deck. And then you divinely mentally reveal their card and are able to pull their card out from the deck. Very similar to a cutting the aces effect. All right. That is a ton of information, right? Ton of tricks. But like I said, you are getting your money's worth with this two decks of cards, right? For 40 bucks, a whole gaff system with two decks of cards. I mean, sometimes gaff cards, you know, a single gaff deck costs 40 bucks. This is completely redesigned from the ground up. You're getting two decks for 40 bucks plus almost three hours worth of magic. This is so, so worth it. You know, talking about, is it worth your money? It's totally worth your money. Is it well made? I already said Phil Smith, right? Phil Smith designed the tuck cases to be totally generic and to, to pass scrutiny. The tuck cases are also secretly labeled so that you know which deck goes in which box. Uh, he designed the back design as well. They're printed by bicycle. They're going to last you forever. 
This is such a wonderful product. As far as pocket space goes, you'll probably only ever carry one deck around with you at a time, and it's the same size as a standard deck of cards, or you'll carry around a tiny packet of cards that you could easily put in a packet trick wallet. As far as the practice goes in this, uh, there isn't a lot of knuckle busting moves. A lot of these tricks are very easy. That said, I will say, maybe just as a negative, uh, both of them, both the teachers, Dan Harlan and David Jonathan, they'll breeze past a lot of slights without stopping to slow down to teach them to you. They're not teaching you any slights in this. So if they do some sort of move, they'll just mention it and show it to you, but they don't actually stop and teach it to you. Okay, so what are the positives to this? I think I've been pretty glowing so far, right? Said a lot of positive things, a lot of good things. Wonderfully creative, right? It's wonderfully creative. I love it when you can do card tricks with something that doesn't scream, this is a card trick. I think whenever people have the opportunity to see something a little different, they're gonna dial in a little closer, right? And so as soon as they see, this is not your standard run of the mill, pick a card, any card trick, I think you're gonna get a lot more engagement from these people. Plus, you know, when they say things like endless possibilities or your only limit is your imagination, I think with something like this, that's absolutely true because there's probably card tricks that you already know how to do that you could now improve or make your own with the snaps decks. All right, so negatives, what are the negatives? You know, on every single one of my reviews, I'm always gonna tell you the good and the bad. You're always gonna get honest and factual reviews every single time from me. The markings on the back, let's talk about the marks because I'm a big critic of Mark Dex, especially because I wear glasses and sometimes I suffer from reading things backwards, you know, and, and so I, I like things as easy as possible. I will say the marks on the back are not always intuitive. It's not like you're gonna see a P on the back and you'll just instantly know, oh yeah, this is the trick card that starts with a P, right? You're gonna have to remember what was that card, which means you will have to learn these cards from the face. So any trick that you're going to be doing, you're gonna know the face cards that you're using. So that when you see the back, you'll say, ah, I know that's the railroad crossing sign, or that's the stop sign, or that's the lion, right? Because just if I showed you a back randomly and said, what is this? You might not know because the marking on the back is very small and very tight. Okay, they're just giving you the smallest amount of information to tip you off to what is on the front, but that's gonna rely on you being familiar with these cards, spending time with these cards. The second negative I would say is, once your audience is alerted to the fact that the card photographs turn into letters and spell things out, it won't be a surprise the second time. You'll get that aha moment the first time and they see, oh wow, those photographs actually make letters, but you won't get that reaction from them a second time. So I don't know how well many of these tricks will pair together unless you're able to break those reveals apart, right? Do a psychological force, do something with numbers, do something with you know the ESP symbols. You're gonna wanna spread these all apart. You're not gonna wanna just do a bunch of spelling tricks back to back to back because I think, like I said, once they realize what these cards are, that element of shock and awe is gonna be stripped away from you for the rest of the tricks. So who would like this? I think people that like card tricks, but they wanna be able to do card tricks that are disguised as card tricks, right? These are not your typical card tricks. Uh, people that do close-up magic, obviously, I think these work so much better for close-up, even though in the video, Dan Harlan is doing these as parlor magic, but he has an overhead camera with screens, so that helps, and if, you know, you, you'd need that for parlor magic because he's laying a lot of these cards down on the table and in that setting, the audience would be lost, right? So I think close up, they're great. And like I said, anybody that wants to get away from the standard card trick and do something creative. All right, so that's everything I can say about snaps from David Jonathan, Dan Harlan, penguinmagic.com. I, of course, bought this with my own money from penguinmagic.com. And I would suggest if you'd like to purchase it, you'd head there as well. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time, bye.